الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا I praise Allah and then I confer blessings upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala created the insan as someone who forgets. And Allah himself, he says regarding himself, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَّا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is someone who does not forget. And the word insan, مُشْتَقٌ مِنَ النِّسْيَانِ is extracted from the word nisyan, which means to forget or forgetfulness. And thus when the angel of death came to Adam alayhi salatu was salam wanting to take his soul at the age of 960 <coughs> and the angel of death came to Adam alayhi salam seeking permission saying that I'm, I've come to take your, your soul right now can I, can I take your soul? Adam alayhi salatu was salam said, no, come back after 40 years. I still have another 40 years. <coughs> then the angel of death reminded, or he was reminded to Adam alayhi salatu was salam that have you forgotten 40 years you allowed this 40 years to be granted to Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. When I see Adam and Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he forgot. And from there we learn the sons of Adam, the sons of Adam, us, we all forget. But the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my respected brothers, is greater than that. And the fact that we forget, but Allah Himself, He reminds us. Through reminders, through messengers, through his words, the Qur'an, and through the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today we are blessed today, coming towards the mid of Sha'ban, coming towards the end of this month, and the beginning, insha'Allah ta'ala, of Ramadan. And this is just a reminder from Allah, but I want to make it very, very clear to us and our minds today, as I said, and what I began with today was that insan forgets. And if it was our way, then we would want to fulfill our desires completely. We would say, Wal billah, yani, wal billah, Allah forbid, yani. this is an example I'm giving. We will say that zina is allowed, alcohol is allowed, drinking, clubbing, all of these things would be permissible. If it was us, if it was to us, because insan wants to fulfill his desires and his shahawat. And Allah subhanahu wa jalla wa ala sends us reminders 
Why? So that we can give him his haqq. Fulfill the rights of tawheed, of the oneness of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan comes as a big, massive reminder, my brothers. The hadith mentioned, Futihat Abwab al Jannah. Just imagine that. You can't imagine it because you haven't seen the doors of Jannah. The doors of Jannah, the distance between Yemen, as Sana and Mecca, the width of it is wide. Wider than anything that you can ever see. More further than the eye can see, subhanAllah. That's just the doors of Jannah, the gates of paradise. And they become wide open. Meaning that the A'mal, Allah Jalla wa'ala gives us that tawfiq again to come back to Him. And if you think, and if you just ponder just for a second, yeah. Lawla Ramadan, imagine, just imagine brothers, just, just for a second, yeah. Imagine, Allah forbid, we forgot about Ramadan this year, we forgot about Ramadan the following year, none of us fasted. This is a hypothetical example here. What would our Iman be the following year? Yeah, Iman would be dipped low. And Jalla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this month of Ramadan as a great, great blessing for us to come back to Him. For us to glorify Him and come back and back and back so we realize the purpose of this creation, as Allah Jalla wa'ala said, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ You think we created you to just play around? Abath is play. You know, I say, by the way, as a benefit, when, you're, when the khutbah is going on, you don't play with the carpet, you don't play with your phone, you listen to the khatib, your eyes are at the khatib, is from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you enter the house of Allah, even the khutbah is going on, you pray the two raka'at. This is from the Sunnah. Once Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped the Sahabi, he said, Have you prayed two raka'at when you enter the house of Allah? And during his khutbah, man, during the khutbah. Imagine if I stop everyone saying, Did you pray two raka'at? And the Sahabi said, La, ya Rasul, no. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Qum fa salli stand and pray to Rakaat. Anyway, that's a side point. So Allah gives us this great blessing of Ramadan coming. So I want to take this opportunity myself to start preparing for Ramadan to realize that it's a great, great gift from Allah. And let that be in my mind, let it be in my heart to be ready for it. We ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to give us tawfiq. أقول ما تسمعون هذا واستغفر الله لي ولسائر المسلمين واستغفروا له إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد سبحانه وتعالى إذا كنتم تحضرون في رمضان يعني هناك عدد من الطرق في رمضان Sha'ban, where we are today, Aisha anha, would say, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast his whole month. Imagine, Ramadan is coming. And you know what this tells me? This tells me something very, very important and great. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his heart was attached to fasting. And the scholars, they say, my brothers, by the way, fasting is that deed where you give up all of your desires. Not just the desires of the private parts, but also the desires of eating and drinking. And there's no deed in Islam that you give it up for as long as fasting. Salah, let's say I have to pray Salah to Raka'ah, I have to take five minutes. I don't eat, I don't drink. Although Abdullah ibn Zubayr, by the way, if you don't know this, this is maybe not important, but this is something that's as a side note. You know, he would drink a little bit in the nafil prayer. And the scholars speak about this. Some of the ulama said that this is prohibited. Some of them, they said that this is permissible in the nafil prayer. If you're praying a long salah and you have a little bit of water on your side and you're praying a long prayer and you wanted to drink a little bit, it is permissible. Not the farad, not the obligatory prayer, guys. Don't start drinking now. Don't start drinking your salahs, yeah? Very important to understand this masala. But 
The point I'm making is fasting, Hajj for an example. You can still eat and drink in the state of ihram. You can't have intercourse, you can't do certain other things, you can't apply perfume on your ihram. So certain desires have been, but not all the desires, but fasting is that amal, is that deed. All of your shahawat are given up. You're eating, you're drinking, everything. And this is that reward. This is that deed Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so attached to, was so connected to. And in fact, I would definitely say it's one of those deeds, that one of the most difficult ones, to be continuous Monday, Thursday, the white days of the month, beyond that as well, beyond that, even more. Fasting the month of Sha'ban and fasting Ramadan. This is what our beloved messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be connected with. So when we, when we try to say, how do I become a patient person? How do I control my shahawat fasting? Now I'm telling that to myself now. My brothers, one of the best ways of also preparing for the month of Ramadan is to realize what am I doing wrong? Repulsive language, backbiting, causing fit in between people, not forgiving and forgetting others, lying, all of these deeds, give it up today. Give it up right now, my brothers. This is a message from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be prepared for the month of Ramadan. And remember the lines of poetry as mentioned. Ata Ramadanu mazra'atul ibad ittaqheel al-quloob min al-fasad. فَأَدِّ حُقُوقَهُ قَوْلًا وَفِعْلًا وَزَادَكَ فَاتَّخِذْهُ إِلَى الْمَعَادِ It says that when Ramadan comes, it's come, Ramadan has come. What is it? It is مَزْرَعَةُ ibad. It is like the picnic or the mazra'ah or the farm of those, for those who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? What's the purpose? لِتَطْهِيلِ الْقُلُوبِ مِنَ الْفَسَادِ to purify the hearts from facade, from fights and arguments and problems. Allah is giving that to us as a gift. So welcome it. Then it mentions, Give it its rights. Actions, statements that you make in the month of Ramadan. Remember, Allah is not in need of that type of fast. Be prepared. Don't lie, don't yell, don't yell your voices, don't scream, don't shout at your family members. Stop shouting at your children, give them good tarbiyah. Spend some quality time with your children. <coughs> teach them about Ramadan, teach them about what it means. The shahr of Quran. Listen to lectures, remind yourself of Allah. Remind yourself from now, not waiting for when Ramadan begins. From now, now. Then it mentions towards the end, فَمَنْ زَرَعَ الْحُبُوبِ وَمَا سَقَاهَا فَأَوَّهْ نَادِمًا يَوْمَ الْحَصَادِ It says, for the person who plants some seeds, but he doesn't water them. You plant seeds, but you don't water those seeds. Indeed, you're going to become very, very regretful on the day these seeds ripe because either these seeds become fruits or they become nothing they just become seeds they just seeds and they're rotten away so my respected brothers what are you going to write what are you going to have ready what fruits are we going to take this ramadan coming up inshallah and the real truth of the matter is none of us really know if ramadan will be there for us or not we ask Allah sincerely to grant us Ramadan. We ask Allah to grant us Ramadan and we benefit from it so much like never before. And that this Ramadan becomes our best Ramadan. Because many in the qabr, in the graves, many who have left this dunya would wish that they can meet one Ramadan, one of the nights, only one of the nights. They wish, they wish, they beg. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرْكْتُ 
Allah, let me turn back to the dunya for doing one action, one good deed, which I left. And every single day we leave deeds, we leave deeds. We forget about subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim These kalimat which are the most heaviest on the scales. Easy. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim Very, very easy to say. We forget about our tasbihat after salah. We forget about our dhikr, our adhkar. We forget about waking up for Fajr. Even Fajr is the most easiest to wake up these days. But we still... So, I'm going to end it here and I'm going to say, thank Allah for these changing of seasons that Allah blesses us with. Thank Allah for the rahmah Allah has bestowed upon us. Giving us these months and seasons. It's just for us to know Allah even more. To become better. That's just the rahmah of Allah. Wallahi. Remember that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our beloved messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this blessed day my respected brothers the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send salam upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم يا ربنا بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان وبلغنا ليلة القدر ووفقنا يا رب العالمين ووفقنا إلى كل عمل صالح الذي يقربنا إليك والذي يقربنا إلى الجنة يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وأدخلنا في جنة الفردوس مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار كوما يصرتك